Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2 from the Team Liquid Map Contest, a new battlefield. But, players you should recognize, let me introduce. You're on Emerald Princess. In the top right, Team Liquid's Frenchman, possibly the best micro Terran in the world. It's Glam. Now, really just embodying what these pro gamers do on these new maps during Wardy's Team Liquid Map Contest. We'll talk more about that momentarily. Let me quickly introduce, on the other side, the Challenger. I think most people against Clem are the Challenger. But it is a laser. The Polish Zerg. One of the... Always overshadowed by Cyril and Rainer, but definitely a contender in his own right. Specializes in, in those later game unit compositions and big game timing attacks. That's at least what I know him for. I haven't seen him in a while. Of course, this game's going to be a little different because Clem, with the Team Liquid map contest, some brave and, and dedicated judges, including pro gamers, map makers, and myself, came up with the finalists which people vote on and and hopefully occasionally make it to the ladder and have, uh, no matter how much time it takes. So, after all that time and dedication from the map makers, of course, the judges, Clem's like, this looks like a do. this looks like a pretty good spot for my two ranks. Uh, <laughs> so, oh wow, look at those beautiful crystals. So here we... <laughs> Here we go. The Reaper Cliff is at the edge. Clem jumping right in. It's a double Rax Reaper proxy. So at least a little spicy. We all know Clem loves his reaper. He's building a bunker in his base. That's how we're going to start this off. No, not some sit back, just chill out macro game. No, Clem is getting Reapers into the base as quickly as possible. And I think every second he shaves off his Reaper timing, his chances of success skyrocket. A laser, I'm sure, shaking his head and probably a little bit rustled right now. But the queen pops out front up, holding the line. The grenades push it back. Target fire is there. A spore crawler to dodge the hits and a spine crawler to hit back. On the way. Oh, another queen, but bounced onto the creep. There is this bunker. The SUV just kind of strode in here. Is that... So Reapers do not have, even though units in a bunker, they get extra range. Reapers don't have that much range to work with in the first place. Of course, Zergling's not known for their range either. As uh, the Queen's trying to box out the Reapers, but Clem just fights the Zerglings and kills most of them. The Queen's stuck on the ramp. Where's the creep, Susan? Oh, that, well, the spine crawler forces the salvage. The SCV just chilling out in the main. So far, Clem has lost nothing but the SCV in the bunker. The Reaper count is growing. Behind this, a command center has begun. It looks like we may make it to at least a second base for Clem. Uh, I was hoping we'd see a, a bit more of a showcase of this beautiful map, though relatively standard one. I believe this was submitted to the standard or macro categories, which I'll be honest, even judging, the lines are somewhat blurred on that because the map makers can kind of decide which category they submit to. But a relatively standard map, but the placement and just the sheer size of the Reaper Cliff, I'm not, I'm not, well, okay, hold that thought. And hold those Reapers in this base. Right now, a laser gets the wrap around. The spine crawler knocks them out. The Zerglings will have their vengeance. And there's no more time for meta discussion. It's time for discussion about the fusion core. Because what is the more obvious transition from mass proxy reaper to battle cruisers? Um. Well, so this is the kind of game we're having. This is what we're doing. I'm excited and concerned and inspired and confused 
Uh, not necessarily in that order or in equal amounts, but you take your pick. A laser... I, I don't think Clem was planning on all the Reapers. Dying. Well, Clem is never planning on any Reapers dying, let's be honest here. But losing every single one, as well as the scouting racks, which, I mean, surprisingly effective, except when the queens can just sit there killing it immediately. That leaves Clem in a bit of an awkward spot. Now, does it really matter? He's just... He knows that a laser with that many queens, and he forced out the Zerglings. Zerglings are not going to be a deadly choice. And at the same time, uh, queens are not going to go walking across the map. So, third command center. He's building a unit that costs more than a command center, and a command center, and a laser is going to see all of it. What can a laser do? Build more queens. That's really all that's on the table here. As, uh, without a lair, it's about a little over halfway done. There's really no other options. If you're not already winding up for an attack, the Battlecruiser is perfectly good on defense and incredibly annoying on offense. The only saving grace here for a laser, besides killing all those Reapers, is that he, with killing all the Reapers, he was able to build a whole bunch of drones. And while the battlecruiser, wow, he just jumped right in the... That's kind of disrespectful. In my opinion... Get off my... Oh, oh <clears throat> sorry, blacked out for a second. That was pretty disrespectful from, uh, from Clem there. I mean, he literally scouted the fusion core and the starport with the overlord. Are you going to jump directly onto the mineral line? Maybe he was trying to mind game it. Like, maybe the spore crawler will be at the edge of the base, so the mineral line will be undefended. But, like, jump it back here or something, so the queens aren't hitting it the second it comes out of warp. This isn't the campaign where suddenly, surprise, we teleported throughout the entirety of space directly into the enemy, because this way we don't have to worry about more cinematic budget. Yeah, this isn't the Expanse, all right? We're not going to sit here for three weeks waiting for ships to get close to each other. That's why Tactical Jump exists, and that's why Queens exist to counter them. Mixing a lot of messages here, but... Oh, I love it. One thing about the, uh, the Team Liquid Map Contest is that while the prize pool is pretty significant, we got several thousand dollars here, but with the IEM coming up, I don't think too many players, most of these players participating, obviously Clem. Nobody wants to do their super standard or whatever strategies they have for the big tournament coming up. And be, that combined with new maps means you actually see something uh, a little fresh, a little new. Maybe not something we, we've never seen before, but things like dropping creep from an overlord and spreading it from there. Things like, what are those? Mutas! And why not? So, there's still a battle cruiser at home. This is shaping up into a, a solid mid game for both sides. 68 workers apiece. A laser's got a fourth hatchery up, fifth macro hatch, sixth hatchery on the ground. Just has to have the larva for units. That's the limiting factor right now. But the Muta's put a clock on any of these medevac pushes. Mainlink's closing in. The Muta's being targeted down by Clem. Trying to get enough space to work with. The Battlecruiser comes in for cover. Picks up eight Marines and somehow gets out. Clem has only lost two Marines throughout this. Clem in a dicey position. Slips his way out. Of course had to call in the Battlecruiser to help. This is the kind of thing, again, it's been a while since we've even seen a game with Mutalisks. As the Mutas are usually not, they don't really find their niche. They don't find the timing to go on offense, which is where they thrive. As a defensive unit, they're just not that great. They're, they're fragile, they're expensive, uh, and they're vulnerable to splash damage. But if they can have the initiative, if they can be the ones picking the fights... That's when they're strong. And and because Clem went for 3cc, because he went for a battle cruiser, means he doesn't have that much of a ground army. Uh, and the Mutas can be decent here. 
Now, Clem immediately realizing the threat. He's got a second factory, drilling claws, getting double widow mines and a Thor. Yes, a Thor coming out again. Feeling a little bit like a Heart of the Swarm match right now. A laser with, wow, six ba- We're at 10 minutes. Both players maxing out, nearing 100 workers for a laser. A solid 72 for Clem. In fact, like, he's almost at the edge of however many workers you want for Terran. 75 to 80. And the army is nearing 100 supply as well. The queen's caught out in front. A couple gunned down. Lots of energy. Not a devastating loss like it would have been earlier. A couple zerglings coming in. We'll scout Clem taking this beautiful, grassy... High property value fourth. It is on a bit of a high ground with some vision blockers, but overall, a vulnerable location to be assaulted by Zerglings, Mutas, and Banelings. Now they're focusing more to the north. A small depot law, law wall is all that stands between. Some Widow Mines gonna connect, hitting just as much Terran as Zerg. Another one, not finding enough. The mute is closing in. Banelings on the mineral line. Find a hit. Not that many SCVs going down. Clem knocked down to a pretty nice number. But we'll have to replace. Suddenly a laser up 40 supply. He's got... Wow, how many hatcheries? Six hatcheries going on seven. Trying to make another turret. Not gonna cut it, Clem. Losing a tank on the high ground. 2-2 two, two closing in for a laser. Right now, Clem technically has the upgrade advantage, but he can't bring it to bear. The battle cruiser still looking for an opportunity to do anything. A few queens gonna try to drive it away. It heavily damaged one of the hatcheries. Another. The mutas should be able to do it. Yeah, the battle cruiser jumped in, which means it ain't jumping out. Infestation pit just now starting. A laser gonna find himself at the same sort of conundrum many Heart of the Swarm Zergs did, which is getting to hide. The hardest part here, especially with a Terran who's already started 3-3. Clem has to be careful not to lose a critical mass of his army before he gets those upgrades, and Banelings closing in from the north side. Dropping the Thor out to tank as much as possible and get some hits on the Mutas. The target fire is good, but not good enough. There are just too many Bane lanes. A Widow Mine Burrows looking for more. A handful of Zerglings. Not enough. 104 drones for the laser, who's going to immediately replenish. 50 more Zerglings. 8 more Mutas. And nearly 200 supply. Where's the hive? Where's the hive, a laser? Three. Two, one. I know, there's a fight happening. You've got the money. The hive is going to be the timer. If he doesn't get a hive, there's a real scenario where Clem could just have a 3-3 army with mostly M-based units and roll across the map just too cost-effectively to beat. Of course, the laser's gonna try to stop that from happening no matter how many Zerglings it costs. Widow Mine, direct hit on all the mutas. Dodging back, one medevac left. Marine splitting behind the marauders. A temporary barrier at best. Mutas adding damage, something you don't usually see nowadays. But with Widow Mines taking the brunt of the attack, another mine looking good. Banelings pretty much gone. Another Widow Mine burrows. The mutas fly back. How many in total? He's got 16. The money number I would say is right around 20. 20 mutas with plus one can one-shot Widow Mines, Medivacs. They are a real threat to anything but large numbers of Marines. And Thors don't really work on them that well if they're magic boxing, aka using the stop or hold position to spread out. There are some Baneling Mines out on the map as well, which not usually used for scouting, but I mean, he'll take it as <laughs> the double Medivac drop spotted. Unfortunately, some of the Marines are coming out, but easily targeting down the Medivac. Yes, the Marines will take a bite out of the Mutas, but they'll be able to compete. Some more mines, looking for the Zerglings. And they'll find them. But a laser can replace all of this. His income is obscene right now. He's looking, well, both of them are looking at 4,000 minerals. A laser's got 1,600 gas a minute. What happened over here? I think he... Was there a Widow Mine drop, or was he just setting up the base? Doesn't really matter now. A hundred drones. 
Bailing's crashing through. Widowmine's dragged into the Overseers. A standoff continues. A Widowmine drop Clem trying to dodge any of this vision. A laser been doing a pretty great job of replacing the creep despite the efforts Clem is making to deal with it. Widowmine's annoying. Gonna need detection over here. Ideally not just spore crawlers. And this has actually opened up the map. He brought essentially his whole army there. There's a couple rocks in the center of the map that either player could open up for a more direct attack path. And once they're open, there are some WLS speed zones as well to accelerate the attack. Actually, speed zones along the upper and lower edges as well. So once you get through the middle of the map, you can kind of springboard into whatever base or location. Oh, Bainling's in a pretty cost and effective engagement. A laser now in the classic situation for Zerg players against Terran. He's maxed. He's got about as good of an army as he's going to get for now. But he doesn't have 3-3 three, three, and he doesn't really have hive tech. So he's got to trade as well as possible without losing too much. The thing is, with 3-3 three, three, and planetaries and turrets everywhere, Clem, it's hard for him to take bad trades. Yeah, Baneling's crashing in, but this is a tragic story. Every time a Baneling attacks, it dies. And many of them attacking here. Clem splitting back, taking a great trade once again. The mutas getting caught by the turrets on the retreat. Intercepting the Marines. The medevacs just pick up as there's not enough Marines left over. Clem down to 155 supply. Mutas looking for the SCVs in the center of the map as they're forced to expand closer to each other. Mules dropping under the mutas as they're forced to retreat from the reinforcing bio army. There are currently eight barracks pumping out units. Three factories, but only one starport with which to reinforce. A laser city on eight hatcheries in total. As right now, 3-3 closing in. He's got plus two on the mutas. Plus one carapace close behind. Gonna dance off the creep again. Thor picked up and dropped right back down like a particularly bad date. Looking for more planetary finishes. Planetary's alive for now, but a couple more banelings will make that no longer true. Marines underneath. Clem is holding, but a laser keeps battering him back, and every time we look, Clem is down to 150, 160 supply, and the laser's replaced it. But the minerals do not last forever. While the map might be slightly different, the mineral counts are the same. That is something that remains a standard mostly throughout all of the maps. So that means the main base is mined out. The gas, only a few hundred left. The natural's drying up for both sides. As time goes on, we have to start thinking about how much is left, rather than how much can we do. Now, there's still a few more bases left untaken, so we're not quite there yet, and both players are still going for this very mid-game heavy, this trade-heavy army. Another round of Banelings. I've lost count at this point, but is the count enough? Widowmind looking for an opportunity. The Banelings, beautiful splits by Clem, but still a couple Banelings on the front line looking for the target fire, forced to pick up another command center. Drop down. The Banelings were forced to lift right back up again. The rock, caught between a rock and a hard place are a lot of those Banelings. Closing in from the side. Enough Banelings rolling through into the third. Marines still splitting back. The SCV count dwindling right now as a laser finds another fight that forces Clem back. But he isn't able to lay down the killing blow quite yet. Clem doesn't have that many more fights left in him at this rate. 48 more Zerglings. Adrenal glands is done. Plus three, plus three, essentially everything. Plus three flyer attack. I can't remember the last time I've seen that, especially in a game this close. It's usually one of those, I'm winning so hard, I might as well get this upgrades. But here, the mutas continue to be a big part of the fight. Another round of Banelings. Clem fighting forward. Widowmine hit, finds a connection, and softens up the mutas, as well as, as killing a couple. The muta count, 17 right now, but not all of them together. The speed vote, oh my god, they're so fast. <laughs> Jesus. The uber boost right now for a laser. You don't want to fight Banelings on creep here. Jesus, the speed zones. They don't stack, but oh my god! 
Yeah, you're, you're gonna want to move along here. Maybe attack a different angle. The Widow Mines. Decent connections. Oh, that's a good one. The Mutas in autumn colors. Still finding more. The medevacs have somehow stayed intact. 67 mutas, 134 mains. Parasitic bomb! Clem, spending his... Uh, taking his sweet time microing back. You gotta be careful! Uh, the medevac count's starting to dwindle, but his reliance on marines and marauders is as well. A laser. Doesn't have that much energy. Queen coming in via the speed zone. Thor's fighting him. Thor gonna get some hits on the mutas, but the mutas are mostly healed here. Another set of banelings. Drag through. The queen's gonna desperately try to replace the creep. Clem seems to be making progress for the first time in a while. The lasers expanded to most of the bases to the south. Still 102 drones, which might actually be why Clem is holding. The, the maximum army supply for a laser is simply not high enough to end the game. Well, with similar army supplies, but overall the SCV count, 69. Mule's making up a lot of the income gap. Oh, oh, he dodged and abducted by going into the medevac and then died anyway, but that was so sick. Technically possible, though not something that's particularly reliable, maybe unless you're Clem. Widow Mines burrowing again. A laser trying to split enough to trigger them without losing too much. A bio army looking for more. Clem adding another command center. The battle continues. One of the most constant struggles back and forth. Spring... Spring shotting? No, slingshot. I, I combined springboard and sling... Spring shotting. That doesn't sound appropriate, but I'm not entirely sure why. Uh... Slingshotting off of the uh, speed zones to the north. The mutas finally find an opportunity to potentially cut off reinforcements. Some more SCVs. At this point, as long as Clem stays above 50, I think he's okay. Magic boxing in the main, but dodges just slips the Thor in. Pirouetting via medevac here. And the Muta is going to be driven into the crystals, but the Thor chasing him down, losing a lot of Mutas. 559 Zunglings, 88 Mutas, 7,000 more gas lost, but 11 Thors. Another wave of Banelings rolling through. There's just not enough Marines to stop him from touching the command center. There's not enough Marines to stop him from touching the Marines. Another wave of Banelings, a tower defense game. It's up, he can't finish his tower, and he has to lift it. The Mutas will force it down. There's still some Widow Mines finding a handful of hits. It looks like that one hit a queen. Only one kill. But the scan forward. A laser looking for the refill. 23 minutes in. No end in sight. Medivac's out of energy. And not too, that many of them out on the map. Zerglings closing the distance on the Widow Mines. Overseers looking to drag more shots in. He'll easily trade Overseers for the mine hits. Another Thor. Dodge back. Mine takes out a bunch of Zerglings. Banelings rolling through. Thor's not particularly good at target firing Banelings. They're more big picture things. Meanwhile, the Queen's still struggling. The creep being replaced every single time it's driven back. A laser. 100 drones. Clem! Suddenly! Not so suddenly, I guess. It's just so much is happening. 116 supply. One of the last bases yet to... Actually, the last base on Emerald Princess here yet to be taken. What a game. Meanwhile, Widowmine looking for a connection. Doesn't have enough. The Muta still fighting. The Mutaling Bane. A Thor badly bruised. More Banelings coming through. Banelings killing a Thor. The Orbital taken down. The Muta should be able to finish it off. Those are plus three, plus one Mutas. Meanwhile, one one Thors. Starting to fill in those upgrades, but really there's not enough space for either side. Zerglings looking for SCVs to kill, but there's no minerals to mine. Clem is running out of mineral patches right now. I think at some point he built a ghost academy, but there haven't been any units worth making ghosts for. 
really at this point they're kind of a liability. This is one of the only unit compositions that ghosts really don't find uh, much of a place in this matchup. And a laser with this incredible economy is still doing a stupid, oh my god. Ooh, a juicy mine hit. Gets about half the main link. Brandon, no! A little too far forward. Another mine. Another hit. The main link count dwindling. The laser, 536 APM to Clem's 400 average. Of course, how much of that is going into the now thousands of Muta's lings and banes? We are at 765 Zerglings, 200 Banelings, and 100 Mutas lost. And the Banelings that just straight up attack don't even show up on that tab. So I think you can probably add at least a few dozen more to it. Meanwhile, Zerglings closing the distance, drawing in the Widow Mines. Thor with no HP, but a whole lot of anger management issues. Driven back, a laser now mining from the last base to be untaken on the map. Untaken? Yeah, it's a word. That's a real word. Seven more mutas, a laser won't stop. He's willing to go down this road. He's taken that corner base. And while he's been, he's been 10,000 gas less cost effective. A base has 4,500. So this is not sustainable. That, that's where we are right now. This, this strategy, if it goes all the way, well, actually, Clem, Clem has lost 13,000 less minerals, which is a little closer to how much a base has. I believe it's 15. I don't, yeah, I'm not here for, to do math. I can do the two gas geysers of math. That's it. But, oh, another mine hit takes a juicy amount of Zerglings. And right now, a laser is right there. He is one good fight away from winning. But so far, all he's gotten are... Honestly, mediocre ones. It's... I, I don't know if there's been any fight where he's really overwhelmed Clem. Just fights where he's beating him back and beating him down. The map, as you see, the players starting to respect the fact that their mineral patches could be counted on the uh, number of hands they're using to beat their keyboards. And s okay, wait, wait, wait. I was going to say hands they're using to beat their keyboards into submission, but that doesn't make any sense. Fingers. And now it's weird. Just saying fingers at all is weird. It's a weird word to just kind of have out there. Fight each other so I don't keep talking, guys. All right. Back to the action. But they can't afford to replace these units anymore. Oh, no. A couple mutas wandering in. The Slingshot Zerglings dragging more. Widowmind's hitting Metavax, but a laser. Clem's now... Oh, but wait! It was all a bait. He slams into the planetary. But we have to ask ourselves that eternal caster question at the end of the day. At what cost? Was it worth 20 Banelings to take out a planetary at this stage? A laser is running out of minerals. He's actually going in the high impact mode on the Thors. I'm not sure if that's intentional. He may have accidentally been in trying to hit a widow mine. For the first time, Clem's making some progress and, and upgraded marines, widow mines. These are units that thrive in this low economy situation. Any unit that continues to gain value like, things like Banelings and Mutas? Mutas, maybe. But Banelings do not gain more value over time. They're, they, they peak in value the moment they're created. And then continually slide... Jimmy, Jimmy, excuse me? Excuse me? We will be speaking of this later. All right. Um, spoilers. Meanwhile, yes, yeah, several matches go on at once. 25 more banlings for a laser who Clem's going to contest the bottom right. He's back at 200 supply, and this is bad news. The, the awkward mid-game army composition that I thought, to a laser's credit, he made it last another 12 minutes or so than I thought he would. And, uh, 
I mean, interpret that however you w would like. But at this point, the mutas are getting hunted down. There's only so many places left that are even worth attacking. Another in incredible round of banelings. Elazer has money in the bank. He's lost 61,000 minerals and 23,000 gas, though. His bank fails in comparison to what he's already spent. There's still some widow mines in the middle of the map cutting off reinforcements. There are burrowed ba- Oh my god. Clem is not in a position, one, to be scanning, uh, or he has not seen burrow- and laser's trying to bait it. Wait, what happened? Oh, it's still under there. There are the burrowed banes. Clem might actually fall for this. Oh, there's a chunk. Was it worth it? Then, of course, the post baneling scan. It is uh, universal. The scanning the barn door after the horse left situation. But that chunk of marines could make the difference. I mean, that was the most value two banelings have gotten probably this game. As Clem doesn't let them just walk up or roll up to him. Yeah, the economies. Ooh. The economies are not what they once were. As we once saw 4,000 minerals a minute. 1,600 gas. Now... Really less than half that for Clem. A little more than half for a laser, but that won't last. Clem, struggling, has to fall back a little further, relying on the Widow Mine. Boost the Metavax away. Mutas don't care. More Widow Mines. Huge hit. 12 kills on one. 25 on the other. I'm not sure how many were here, but the Thor is starting to zone out. Clem trying to box out the base, but between... The Dubulas. Well, they're still creep here. Muta Ling Bane until the end. You gotta respect a laser's commitment. But is it going to be enough? We've fought this battle now for 20 minutes. We've fought this battle since the third and fourth bases were being taken, and now there's less than four bases left. Kills another widow mine. Anything he sets his sights on gets killed by this pack of mutas. A murder of mutas. As long as he's paying attention. The creep still coming across the map without that much to deal with it. There's one mineral patch. Oh, fighting marines is not the ideal, but at the same time, Lings and Banes. Trying to box out. Taking out the mines. Clem. He doesn't have any minerals. Wait. Oh, wait, he does. He does. These are the only minerals, though. There's, like, he's mining, like, almost an entire base if you add up all the mineral patches right now. But the mutas make short work of these, wait. The, the mutas make short work of part-time repair jobs. Uh, as those SCVs are all drawn in. A laser still at 92 drones. 29 mining, 4 mineral patches here. Oh, the will- Oh, no! He fumbled out the mine! The overseers weren't quite there. Another huge hit. But Clem, he's dragging every last mineral out. This is some of the most efficient mineral collection. What I mean is, neither player has really been significantly denied on the minerals. Like, they have mined several bases at a time for 20 minutes and it's almost only 30 minutes in it sounds like a lot it's really not that much only 30 minutes in i i raise you an hour for bronze lake heroes and there's it like we're almost out of mineral patches there's maybe 12 left he's not even repairing they're scanned at this point might as well scan what are you gonna do drop mules i don't Oh, uh, 129 mutas. He's lost 17,000 more minerals. He's lost 14,000 more gas. And he uses his last couple thousand on infestors. Does he even have pathogen glands? I mean, the first non mutaling bling unit. Seven infestors. Something to hold Clem down and potentially lay down the knockout. 
Oh, <laughs> dodging. Picks up everything into the medevax. The uh, <laughs> drop split. Long distance mining. The few hundred minerals left. Clem. Oh, the orbital itself. The bounces from the mutaglaves. The army supplies are about even. Don't let the overall supplies fool you. Workers are almost irrelevant now. Looking for more. Trying to get some of the widow mines, but instead loses a muta. Can he lose 200? No, no I don't think we're ever going to get to 200 mutas. Clem starting to run very low on the income. The laser not far behind. Eight more mutas. But one infester. Remember, he also can just burrow the infester. Honestly, these infestors are going to come out of nowhere. If he gets... Does he have any vi- I guess he did make vipers before, now that I think about it. The drones can fight. Let's go! Uh, predator drones! The infestors? Did- I don't think they've been spotted yet. This could be it. He looks for the flank. Gets the fuckles on the Metavax! Across the bow! Looking for more overlords coming in. He's sacrificing them. There's still a couple widow mines. The drones are ready to fight. A laser has almost. Uh, he's trying to snipe off the widow mines, which are the real danger here. Oh, but a handful of marauders is going to deal with with some of the infestors. The dro uh, the drones are making it harder to target fire banes, but it's Clem. Remember? Wow, he just stimmed in. He saw that none of the infestors had 75 energy. He counted the energy, and he stimmed right into their faces. The presence of mind to do that. Hmm. Now, they are recharging. They're back to 75, but the base is taken out. I don't know how much of that's going to matter in the long run. The, the boys, the workers are pulled. There's nothing left to mine. Everything on the line. There's, all, there's a, a thousand minerals left at this point. Workers are called onto the front lines as there's nothing left. Six versus 14 minerals. Oh my god, with zero income. This is the most, well, the most even game, despite a laser losing a full nother base. The, it, the blue, everything, just lift it all. Unburrow, lift. Workers! He wants the minerals from this side. There's some trouble. He's getting the creep. The mutas! The mutas! Jimmy! How many times? They're intercepting. I, I don't know why we have the production tab. I... So... We have gone from trading thousands upon thousands of minerals and gas every minute to lifting the barracks to wall off the base that at this late hour with 700 minerals left. There's a changeling here, by the way. Clem's going to be supply blocked despite being at only 75 supply. A laser. He's got 28 mutas. What is the anti air? There are five mines. There are 23 marines. It's a tenuous amount of anti, anti air here. Those mutas can win the fight against the marines without. If no mines get involved, that many 3 2 mutas can fight an even number of marines. Like, you usually don't see even fights. Because the Muta upgrades lag so far behind the Marines. The mines are required here. A laser doesn't have enough money for another Overseer. Uh, that's kind of something to point out. His detection may be limited to Fungal. He, he literally doesn't have the minerals for an Overseer here. Oh, you gotta be every... These are irreplaceable. Every single unit. Somehow. Oh, no. He's just locking him down. Clem, unable to fight. That's all he has. Has to stand and grab the drones! The Bailey! A laser! 
with his last army wins with nothing left on this beautiful map. Every single unit. The only difference between the top tier and the very opposite is how quickly we mine things out. 17 Thors, 119 Whittle Mines, 146 SCVs, 46 Medivacs, some Hellions and Reapers, a surprising amount of Reapers. Remember how this started with a proxy two rags? A couple tanks, 78 Marauders, 387 Marines and a battle cruiser. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's not 212 Zerglings. Uh, I didn't realize we had this issue. That's 1,212 links. It... This wasn't designed for four digits. So... 1,212 Zerglings. 145 Mutalisks. 280 Banelings. That is nearly 300 supply of mutas, 600 supply of zerglings. I wish, besides just total mining, we had a supply lost tab as well. I mean, you can do the math, but I'd rather not. A laser mined 20,000 more minerals and gas in one by zero more minerals. Okay, the standing army was about 2,000 minerals. 2,800 that he had at the end. But by a tiny fraction of that number. Wow. I picked a game between a laser and Clem. I'm like, I haven't seen a laser in a while. It's always fun to watch Clem. But they did not disappoint. Emerald Princess. Uh, a beautiful map. And uh, a beautiful game between these two. Well, thank you for watching. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to top that. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you next time. Stay chill.